clock is ticking. I am a loving person. Every day, I wake up. I help my ten-year-old daughter get ready for school, then prepare breakfast for the both of us. After that, we will walk hand in hand to her school. At her school, I will kiss her goodbye, pat her back, and tell her I love her. I will wait at the gate, waving at my daughter, until she disappears behind that corridor. I am a kind person. After sending my daughter to school, I begin walking to work. I smile at people I pass, giving them small encouragements as I walk on by. On the way to work, I see many, too many homeless people along the road. Out of the kindness of my heart, I never fail to dig out some loose change in my pockets to give to them, hoping to bring some relief to their suffering. I am a helpful person. During work, there will always be those few people who don't quite seem to understand some simple things. But it's alright. No matter what kind of problems they face, from printer problems to Excel problems, I always lend them a helping hand. I will put down my work and help them until they figure out their problems. I am a selfless person. After work, I am not like anyone else. I don't get in my luxury sports car and drive back home to lie on the sofa or stare at the television. No, not me. Instead, I will head to the nearby nursing home to help volunteer there. I will help with the cooking, some cleaning, or maybe simply just lend a listening ear to the abandoned old folks. I enjoy volunteering there a lot, and the people there feel the same way towards me. As you can see, I am a good person. After volunteering, I immediately head back home. After all, my daughter is probably home already. The first thing I do as I reach home is to give my precious daughter a hug. I will listen to her day carefully and talk to her. Then, I proceed to the kitchen to prepare our dinner. I first prepare my daughter's favorite hamburger and fries followed by my simple meal of meat, veggies, and rice. Lastly, I prepare a bland bowl of porridge, in case someone gets hungry. Then we eat. We sit together in the dining room and we eat together and share more about our day. Finally, after we eat, I do the dishes. I clean and clean and clean and ensure everything is spotless. You might imagine that after I've done so much, it is now time for me to rest. But that's not right. I have one last thing to do. I grab that bowl of porridge and proceed to the backyard. I walk quickly and purposefully to the shed at the back, then open the dog door. I quickly insert the bowl into the shed. Hello. Your food is here. Consume it quickly, then push it back out. It's not much, but... Whatever. I muttered softly as I knocked the door. Immediately comes a series of crying from the other side of the door. I block out the noise, smile to myself, then walk back to the house. And that's the last job of the day. I decide to go spend some time with my daughter in her room. As I walk in, I see her face light up at the sight of me. Dad, Dad, you know the bully at school? He already hasn't been in school for a whole week. I'm starting to think he's never coming back. I'm so happy. She shouts in glee. I smile at her joy and reply. That's wonderful. Remember not to go into the shed, alright? There's lots of dangerous equipment there. My daughter nods and continues snuggling in my arms. I think to myself, don't worry, child. I've taken care of him for you. You'll never be hurt by him again. I'll protect you, my beautiful girl. See? I'm a loving, kind, helpful, and selfless father. I am a good person. And no one is allowed to hurt my daughter. <laughs>